supposed to go for a trip somewhere, there are things you must do. So that when you go there, you have that confidence, you are about to do the right thing, you are about to get to the right place and say the right message. So we are starting from here. How do you prepare for a speech? And uh, I hope you understand in paper one you are supposed to give what you'll do and why you'll do it. So when you give us the answer of what you'll do in preparation for a speech, give us why you'll do so. For example, if, if you say that I'll have to look for uh, maybe decent dresses, then you have to explain that so that I'll appear decent for the audience. Yeah, so tell us, what will you do? What do you think Patrice Lumumba did before he went to present such a speech? Yeah. Research on the topic of study. Good. Research on the topic. So you must research on the topic of the speech. Why? Why should you research? Yes. Uh -huh. Familiarize with the topic. Any other reason? Any other reason? Yeah. Uh -huh. To make your speech more effective and also to sound credible. Isn't it? Yeah. You can imagine going before people, then you are blank, you don't have information. You heard in his speech he talks about the Torah, the Quran, the Bible, and how he talks about uh, that aspect of far from slavery. It's not just happened that you tend to do so. Is Patrick Lumumba a Christian? Is he a Muslim? Indian? In terms of religion? How did he come to know about what is in the Torah and Quran? Research. So nobody says when you are Christian, now you close your chapter and say, I'll only read the Bible. You have to go out there and research. You go even to an Indian temple and worship one day. There's no harm in that because you are researching. But then you close your mind and, uh, mind and say, it's only my religion that is better then you might not know a lot about what other people do. And sometimes you might just discover these um, religious books are all the same. The difference is very minimal. Now let's get another way. Apart from researching, what should you do? Yeah. Uh -huh. Exercise to be, to gain what? Confidence. Yeah, that's very important. Many people don't know that, but it's necessary that you exercise to enhance confidence. And exercise is body. We have push-ups, we have run-ons, we have dancing, we have gardening, we have jump rocky, uh, jumping the rock and all that. Number three, what else would we do? Yes. You? That is research. Uh, you have research. So what do you do? You know, damn good. So not the information on the topic. Why? Why should you write something down after you research? Yes. Yeah, so for reference purposes, any other thing you'll do? Any other thing you'll do? A certain, uh, um, that is facts, figures, opinions, that is under research, because research is broad. It allows you to get the content, the right information, false and uh, non-evidenced. So any other thing? Yeah? So then, speech in front of we call them mock audience. Huh? So present the speech before 
before a mock audience or a mirror. Sometimes you might not have anybody to check on what you are doing, so you do before the mirror. Why? Why should we do that? Gain confidence apart from that. Apart from gaining confidence, what why would you rehearse? Yeah, establish the best way to deliver. You know, delivering is different from anything else. You might say you know everything, but once you go before the audience, then everything vanishes. So you have to do so, so that you actually correct possible mistakes. Correct mistakes. Uh huh. Any other thing you'll do? Yeah. Uh -huh. Plan on dressing. Why should we do so? And you can be particular in this. You just say you seek for decent uh, clothing or suitable. Because if you are going to uh, perform before singers, do you have, even have to, uh, to acquire a suit? No. It should be a suitable dressing based on the audience. Why? Yes. Huh? Up here? Listen. <coughs> and even have that comfort. You know, if you don't dress suitably, you will feel you are out of place. It's like going to a, a church, or there are other churches, then you put on um, the what? The shorts. <coughs> will you appear to be suitable in such a place? No. <laughs> no, or you are coming before the students and you are presenting a speech on performance and you are having that, how do you call it, that shoulder that is um, right yeah, how would you appear? Yeah, isn't it? Before students, you are talking about performance and you are dressed like that. No. That would be when you are talking about talent or something, you know, something that is just fun or jokes. But when you are talking about actually, or you can imagine Father Anthony coming to preach and he has put on shorts and a cape. <laughs> yeah. So to appear decent and appropriate for that specific, you can see Lumumba was dressing like an African, yeah? Because he was addressing Africans, various leaders uh, from African nations. So his dressing was quite suitable for that. Any other? Any other thing you do? Any other thing you do? Maybe you can research. At least we have more than five. And in exams, they test three up to five. Now let's get to presentation. You are right at the very you are giving the speech, and that's what actually you are seeing in the video. Uh, Patrice Lumumba talking, and I would even get so many others. Obama, who else speaks well? Ruto. Yeah? Ruto. Michelle Obama, any other? I don't want you to give best on this is somebody from my community, but best on the best. <laughs> the best. Voice, but 
creation. You know, we have the variation of voice and we have tone, which are two different things. And you heard that, but if you move at a time, his voice varies from one end to another. Why should we vary? Why should we vary our voices when you're speaking? And that will happen to anyone, including the person who said, I have a dream. Who, who is he? Grace that is for one. Who was that?
being humorous to also alert and encourage the audience to keep listening. Nanfabo, you had told me gestures, but you have to say appropriate. Don't just say gestures, say appropriate gestures. Why should you gesture? You and me, what for? Gesture. So you write that reason here. Any other you told me? Uh -huh. Appropriate facial expression like smiling when it should be mourning or kind of frowning. Yeah, those differences in faces to give relevant communication. Because if you are talking about something that is displeasing and uh, you are smiling, the audience won't follow actually. Uh -huh. Appropriate posture. You could not see Lumumba standing like this. Neither did he stand like this. He was just standing in the right posture. What for? When you are presenting your speech, why is it necessary to stand in the right way? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, it makes you confident and it makes the audience believe in what you are saying. Uh -huh. Any other? Maintaining meaningful eye contact, not just eye contact. I told you sometimes you can see people quite like that. But maybe they have used marijuana or they took something in the morning. So it is meaningful. There's a time you're supposed to look at somebody and there's a time you look away. I was in another class and somebody, I was, I think that person sits here. And they were just looking from here to the other end. Were they having meaningful eye contact? <laughs> I failed to pause to 
allow the audience to internalize. Or I presented the information during lunch time when they were almost rushing for lunch. Yeah? Or I picked a topic that was heavy for them. I hardly used examples enough for them to get the message. Yeah. So is there a question from you? A question on speech presentation so that we have covered both writing and delivery. Are you tired or you don't you are saying no go out because we need another teacher in? Yeah. Oh, where's the question? You understood fully? Yes. yes. And I hope you use uh, the other book better best. Huh? Yes. There's a question there you can get and work on. 